The framework for the Churchill River Power Project, outlined on March 9, 1998, by Newfoundland and Labrador Premier Brian Tobin and Quebec Premier Lucienne Bouchard, included many components. One, the development of a 1,000 megawatt generating station at Churchill Falls, including the diversion of the Saint Jean and Romaine rivers in Quebec. Two, construction of a 2,200 megawatt generating station at Gull Island. Three, associated transmission facilities. Four, a feasibility study for an 800 megawatt generating facility at Muskrat Falls. And five, a 400 kilovolt DC transmission line to the island of Newfoundland. With the goal of signing a memorandum of understanding by the end of 1998, thorough environmental and engineering studies were initiated. The environmental fieldwork in Newfoundland and Labrador has provided important baseline data to be used for future environmental assessment and monitoring of the project. The studies focused on freshwater, marine, historic resources, and terrestrial environments, land use, culture, and other socioeconomic aspects of the project will be examined once more specific information is known. The freshwater program involved seven studies examining water flow, water and sediment quality, primary productivity, fish, fish habitat, and fish movement throughout the proposed project area. Dr. Richard Booth led the field team conducting the fish migration and habitat use study of the Churchill River. And what we're doing here today is very similar to what we do on the river itself. And uh, we angle and net brook trout, and we bring them uh, to a surgical table here in the field, and we implant small radio transmitters uh, manufactured by Low Tech uh, Engineering Incorporated. Uh, and after a brief surgical procedure, we release the fish back into the river, uh, and then we can monitor its movements within the river using fixed uh, monitoring stations located at various sections along the river itself. The marine program examined baseline conditions in the Strait of Belle Isle, Goose Bay Estuary, and Inner Lake Melville. Studies considered physical conditions, such as currents, water temperatures and tides, as well as the commercial fishery, seabirds, and marine mammals in the region. Three studies were conducted, Labrador Historic Resources, Sea Level History of the Churchill River, and Newfoundland Historic Resources along the transmission line route. The Labrador study included a training program for Innu researchers. Fred Schwartz conducted the training and led one of the study teams. Okay, the purpose of this uh, training program here is to train uh, Innu researchers in, in archaeological field techniques so that they can participate in the hydro assessment, the assessment of uh, generating stations and um, and p possible flooding impacts along the Churchill River. The terrestrial program included a review of existing information on caribou and moose, and a review of forestry resources in the region. Waterfowl, harlequin duck, bald eagle, and osprey studies were conducted. Aerial photographs were also taken for the entire project area. On the engineering front, Feasibility studies were conducted for the proposed Gull Island development, the Churchill Falls expansion, the possible development of Muskrat Falls, and AC transmission requirements in Labrador. Previous studies have established the feasibility of developing approximately 2,200 megawatts of electrical power at Gull Island. Engineers studied the site in 1998 to help determine the size of project structures and to develop a cost estimate. Now this is the Gull Island Hydroelectric Development. It's it would be located about 100 kilometers west of Goose Bay uh, along the Churchill River. And it consists mainly of a large dam in the middle of the river, which is <clears throat> 100 meters high. Uh, and the power facilities, which consists of the powerhouse intake and uh, spillway on the south bank of the river and uh, a large diversion facility to be used during construction which consists of two large tunnels. Uh, once constructed, the powerhouse will be uh, able to produce about 
2,264 megawatts of electricity. Past work conducted has indicated it is possible to increase the generating capacity at Churchill Falls. 1998 work was carried out to verify the technical and economic viability of the proposed expansion. The field work included seismic surveys and an evaluation of the rock characteristics in the area to help determine the location and cost-effective options for the power plant. To assess the engineering feasibility of development at Muskrat Falls, the site was also examined to determine the size of project structures and develop a cost estimate. To accomplish this, soil samples were tested, rock conditions were studied, and water depth measured. Okay, this is the Muskrat Falls hydroelectric development. It's located about uh, 40 kilometers west of Goose Bay, uh, along the Churchill River, the flow going in this direction. And it consists of uh, a powerhouse and a spillway and some uh, concrete dams located just uh, upstream of the lower falls at Muskrat Falls. Uh, it also consists of a diversion facility for construction uh, that's located through the rock knoll of Muskrat Falls, which consists of two large tunnels that will take the water for two years during the construction period. When completed, this powerhouse uh, and facility will produce approximately 824 megawatts of electricity. The feasibility study for the transmission uh, lines uh, for the Labrador project is broken down into two parts. One part is the AC transmission system in Labrador, and the other is the DC infeed, which is shown here from Gala Island to the uh, St. John's. Uh, from Gala and the power development, we have uh, three AC transmission lines, one from Gal. Island to Churchill Falls, which we call it the tie line. Uh, it will be 735 kV, approximately 200 kilometer. And then we have a line from Gal Island to the Montane uh, uh, substations here, uh, which would be approximately uh, 335 uh, kilometer. And then we have a line from Gal Island to Muscat Falls which would be a double circuit, 230 kV transmission lines, approximately 60 kilometer. And then we have a line in feed we call DC, plus minus 400 kV from Gal Island to Soldier's Point St. John's, which is 1,100 kilometer uh, DC line, including a 38 kilometer submarine cable crossing in the Strait of Belle Isle. Uh, this year in 1998, we primarily did the feasibility study to, to get the cost pictures, which is the capital cost, for all these lines uh, which I just described as part of this uh, Labrador Power Development Projects. Results of the studies included meteorological summaries, geotechnical investigations, a selection of conductor sizes, a summary of capital cost estimates, and a preliminary project schedule. Important engineering support studies conducted in 1998 included a probable maximum flood study, a power and energy study, a global positioning satellite survey, and a power system study. These studies examined various factors. For example, to determine the size and characteristics of large floods for the probable maximum flood study, past floods, severe weather patterns, temperature and snow melting rates were studied and Environment Canada records were consulted. The proposed Churchill River Power Project will yield enough renewable energy to match the annual electricity consumption of over half a million households and provide a clean, stable source of power. Environmental and engineering studies are ongoing. The formal environmental assessment process will begin in 1999.